Greetings, history, enthusiasts, and curious minds alike. Welcome to a journey through time where we'll delve into the illustrious civilizations of ancient Greece and Rome. Forget dusty textbooks and forget simply memorizing dates. Today, we're embarking on an exploration that unveils the profound ways these societies tackled the very questions that continue to resonate with us today. Welcome to the Abyss of Wisdom. We're talking about the big ones. How should we live? What constitutes a good life? A life filled with happiness and meaning. How do we build a society that thrives? One where its citizens flourish. The Greeks and Romans, draped in their togas and whispering tales of gods and heroes, weren't just a collection of impressive architecture and epic myths. They were philosophers, politicians, artists, and everyday people grappling with the same core human desires and anxieties that we face. By understanding their approaches, their successes, and their inevitable stumbles, we can glean valuable insights for navigating our own complex world. Part 1. The Quest for a Good Life Greek philosophers and the art of eudaimonia. Let's begin in the sun, drenched piazzas of ancient Greece, where philosophical discussions flourished like blooming olive trees. The Greeks weren't simply interested in pleasure. They craved a deeper sense of fulfillment a concept they termed eudaimonia. It wasn't about fleeting amusement, but about living a virtuous life. A life guided by reason and excellence. Among the most influential thinkers was Aristotle, a student of the legendary Plato. Aristotle believed that happiness wasn't some mystical gift bestowed by the gods. It was a consequence of living a life true to your potential. This meant using your unique talents and abilities, exercising reason and logic in your decision, making and cultivating good character, traits like courage, temperance, and justice. Imagine a sculptor meticulously chiseling away at a block of marble, slowly revealing the magnificent statue within. That's how Aristotle saw the pursuit of eudaimonia, the constant striving to refine your character and hone your skills to become the best version of yourself. It wasn't about reaching an end goal, but rather about the ongoing journey of self-improvement. But wait, there's more. Other Greek schools of thought offered contrasting perspectives on happiness. The Epicureans, for instance, advocated for a life of moderate pleasure urging people to find joy in simple things like good food, meaningful relationships, and intellectual pursuits. The Stoics, on the other hand, emphasized resilience and accepting what lies outside your control. They believed that true happiness resided in focusing on your own thoughts and reactions, not external circumstances. Part two, building a flourishing society. Greek democracy and the Roman Republic. The Greeks weren't just pondering the meaning of life. They were also actively experimenting with different forms of government. Athens, the cradle of democracy, stands as a testament to their innovative spirit. Athenian citizens, both men and women, though women's rights were quite limited, actively participated in shaping their society. They debated laws in the public assembly, voted on important decisions, and held their elected officials accountable. Imagine a marketplace of ideas, a cacophony of voices raised in passionate debate. This was the essence of Athenian democracy, a system with undeniable flaws, like the exclusion of slaves and foreigners but one that laid the groundwork for modern notions of participation and representation. Across the Mediterranean, in the bustling heart of Rome, a different political system emerged. The Roman Republic, a complex mix of elected officials and a powerful Senate, offered a more stable and centralized form of government, 
Roman citizens, particularly wealthy landowners, had a voice in electing representatives and shaping laws. The Roman Republic wasn't perfect. Power struggles and social inequalities were constant challenges. However, its emphasis on civic duty and a strong legal framework helped maintain order and stability for centuries. Part three, the enduring Lacey. Lessons from the classics. Now, let's be honest. These ancient civilizations weren't utopias. They grappled with brutal wars, social hierarchies that favored the elite, and the barbaric institution of slavery. However, by acknowledging their shortcomings, we can learn valuable lessons to avoid repeating their mistakes. But beyond the flaws, the enduring legacy of Greece and Rome shines brightly. Here are some key takeaways we can incorporate into our own lives and societies. The power of education. Both civilizations placed a high value on education. Greek philosophy schools and Roman rhetoric training fostered critical thinking, effective communication, and a well-rounded understanding of the world. In our own time, prioritizing quality education for all remains essential for building a flourishing society. The importance of civic engagement. The Greek and Roman experiments in self-governance, though imperfect, demonstrate the importance of citizen participation. Whether through voting, community involvement, or holding our leaders accountable, active engagement is crucial for a healthy democracy. The pursuit of reason and logic. The Greek emphasis on reason and logic in decision-making offers a valuable perspective while emotions are undeniable. Critical thinking and a healthy dose of skepticism are essential tools for navigating a complex world. The value of the arts and humanities. Greek and Roman contributions to literature, philosophy, art, and architecture continue to inspire us today. By nurturing the arts and humanities, we cultivate creativity, empathy, and a deeper understanding of the human experience. Part four, a living legacy, applying the lessons today. So, how can we apply these lessons in the 21st century? The answers lie not in blindly mimicking the past, but in understanding its complexities and drawing inspiration for our own challenges. Combating inequality. The stark social inequalities evident in both Greece and Rome serve as a cautionary tale. We must strive for a more equitable distribution of resources and opportunities, ensuring everyone has a chance to contribute and thrive, building a sustainable future. The Roman obsession with expansion and conquest ultimately contributed to its decline. Today, we face issues of environmental sustainability and global cooperation. Learning from past mistakes encourages us to build a future based on collaboration and responsible resource management. The importance of civic discourse, the Athenian marketplace of ideas, despite its limitations, serves as a model for fostering healthy debate in a world rife with misinformation and political polarization. Open and respectful dialogue is crucial for addressing complex issues. The study of ancient Greece and Rome isn't just about memorizing dates and battles. It's about delving into the intellectual and political currents that shaped these civilizations, and in turn, shaped the world we live in today. By understanding their triumphs and failures, their philosophies and political structures, we gain valuable tools to navigate our own complexities strive for a just and equitable society, and ultimately build a future filled with meaning and purpose. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the enduring legacy of Greece and Rome. Remember, history isn't a dusty tome gathering cobwebs. It's a vibrant conversation waiting to be engaged. Let's keep the dialogue going. In the comments below, Share your thoughts on the lessons we can learn from these ancient civilizations. What resonates most with you? 
Don't forget to like and subscribe for more explorations of history's fascinating corners. Until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep engaging with the past.